Hello everyone, this is Mr. Vanderpool. Today we're going to continue talking about the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, also known as ADAS. And today we're going to be focusing in on changes in short run aggregate supply. So first, let's review. First of all, um, where you ultimately want an economy to be on the ADAS, and that is at full employment. Okay, remember full employment equilibrium exists where aggregate demand intersects short run aggregate supply and long run aggregate supply at the same point. So with our ADAS graph, we have price level on our y-axis, real GDP in our x-axis. We have our um, downward sloping aggregate demand curve our upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve, our vertical long run aggregate supply curve, and right below that um, is your full employment output represented by the variable YF. Okay, remember at a full employment output, that is the output that exists at full employment when uh, an economy has about 5% unemployment and is operating at max efficiency there. Okay, so because we're at full employment, aggregate demand and short run aggregate supply are intersecting at that long run aggregate supply curve, and that ultimately is where we want an economy to end up at. So let's talk changes in short run aggregate supply. Remember, there are three determinants of short run aggregate supply that will actually shift that short run aggregate supply curve. First one is input prices. So if input prices fall, that is going to cause, that is going to imply, remember the three dots means an I, um, that implies that the short aggregate supply curve shifts to the right, which implies that real GDP goes up and the price level goes down. Remember, if input prices fall, that means that suppliers can make more money, they have more of an incentive to supply there. So input prices fall, short run aggregate supply shifts to the right, which implies that GDPR goes up and the price level goes down. Now that implies that the unemployment, uh, the unemployment rate is going to fall and the inflation rate is also going to fall. Remember the unemployment rate is going to move the opposite of real GDP. So here because real GDP went up, that's going to push the unemployment rate down. Remember price level moves the same way as inflation. So if the price level falls, that means the inflation rate is going to fall. Okay. Now, if input prices go up, that's going to imply that short run aggregate supply is going to shift to the left, which implies that real GDP falls and the price level goes up. If real GDP falls, that means there's less output, there's less employment, and more unemployment. So that's going to imply that the unemployment rate is going to um, go up. And if the price level rises, that implies that the inflation rate is going to rise. Because remember, the inflation rate is just the rate of change in the price level, which means that if the price level is going up, that inflation rate is going up as well. So in short, aggregate supply shifts to the left you're going to see a real GDP fall, price level go up, which is going to imply that the unemployment rate is going to go up and the inflation rate is also going to go up. All right, changes in productivity are going to be very similar. If you have a productivity increase, that's going to move the short run aggregate supply curve to the right, which implies that Real GDP goes up, price level goes down, which implies that the unemployment rate falls and the inflation rate falls. So whenever the short run aggregate supply sh curve shifts to the right, real GDP is going to go up, price level is going to go down, unemployment rate is going to go down, inflation rate is going to go down. A drop in productivity is going to shift short run aggregate supply to the left. Whenever short run aggregate supply shifts to the left, real GDP is going to fall price level is going to go up, unemployment rate is going to go the opposite of GDP, which in this case is up, inflation rate goes the same way as price level, which in this case is up. All right, and we can do the same thing with legal institutional environment, so taxation and subsidies and regulation. 
Okay, so I'll let you take that one down. So we're going to be able to see these things um, in just a little bit on our ADAS. We're going to see after we shift that short and arrogant supply curve how that affects unemployment, inflation, real GDP, and price level. All right, so ladies and gents, let's move on to a practice problem here. We're going to graph and explain what would happen to the equilibrium price level, real GDP, unemployment rate, and inflation rate in the short run if the economy is at full employment equilibrium and there is a decrease in input costs. So, first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and draw our ADAS in full employment output here. So it's, because it says that the economy uh, is in equilibrium, it's at full employment output, and there's a decrease in input cost. So we're going to go ahead and put price level represented by the variable PL on our y-axis, GDPR represented um, which represents the variable real GDP on our x-axis. We have our downward sloping aggregate demand curve. We have our upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve. And then remember, uh, we're starting off at full employment output. So aggregate demand and short run aggregate supply are going to intersect uh, on top of the long run aggregate supply curve. Right below that, we're going to have full employment output represented by the variable YF. So at full employment equilibrium, we have aggregate demand, short aggregate supply intersecting at the longer aggregate supply curve. So we're going to have an equilibrium price level, which we'll represent by the variable P, and then we're at full employment output at this point. Okay, now there is a decrease in input costs. If there's a decrease in input costs, um, that means that suppliers are going to make more profits, so they're actually going to have an incentive to supply more, um, which means the short aggregate supply um, is going to increase, which means it's going to shift to the right. So we're going to go ahead and shift the short aggregate supply curve to the right. from SRAS to SRAS1. And now we have our new equilibrium where aggregate demand meets SRAS1. We have our new equilibrium price level, which we'll call P1, and our new equilibrium output, which we will call Y1. Now, the last thing we need to figure out is what's going to happen to price level, real GDP, unemployment, and inflation. So the first thing, uh, we can see that the price level went down. Okay, so we'll write that down. The price level went down. And real GDP went up. So GDP R went up. Now, remember, I've seen students use this technique very, very well. Um, we, you, we put unemployment below real GDP and inflation below price level, and we know how those are related. So for price level, um, we're going to put our inflation rate below that. Remember, the inflation rate is going to go the same way as the price level, so it's going to go down. And our unemployment rate is going to go the opposite way of GDPR. So it's going to be going down. So we've shifted our short and arrogant supply curve. We talked about what happened to price level real GDP, inflation, and unemployment. And you've got a complete problem there.